Ready for the storm? Oh, it's not going to be big, right? No. What they say? Under three? What they say? Under three? Three to five. We can handle that. Yeah. Probably because they've all been wet and heavy. They haven't been fluffy. Yeah. So they have the shovel. Right. stand as we start our service today. Praise the Lord. Let's pray that we can get our uh, service in before we go to the blizzard, okay? <laughs> but we're from Maine. I mean, a little snow. My goodness, you can drive through 10 feet of snow in the way. Amen. Let's hear the word of the Lord as Pam reads from God's word this morning. I'm reading from the book of John, <laughs> chapter 3. There was a man named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said, We know you are a teacher of God. No one can do these miracles except God be with him. Jesus said to him, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked how a man can be born again when he's older and cannot enter into his mother's womb a second time. Jesus answered him by saying, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You must be born again. Jesus was baptizing in Anon, near Salem, because there was a lot of water there. People came and they were baptized. Jesus was not yet in John was not yet in prison. There was a question between John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. This question pertained to the rabbi who John had been with who was also baptizing. John told them that a man cannot receive anything except it come from heaven. They could bear witness to this. John told them that he was not the Christ, but he was sent before him. He must increase, but I must decrease. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. May all of us believe and have everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessings to each one of you today. Amen. 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 Father, we bow before you this morning as we begin our service today. We, Lord, quiet our hearts from the busyness of the week. And we quiet our hearts from that which lies ahead of us for this week. So, Lord, we concentrate on you this morning. Lord, as the word says, may the words of my heart and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God, my strength, and my Redeemer. 
Amen. Amen. The name of the Lord is my strong tower. The righteous are
keep space sing. We used to say to our granddaughter, do you have a song in your heart? The Lord keeps us singing. Praise the Lord.
praise the Lord. Before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we're going to sing, Worthy, you are worthy. Praise the Lord. As we bring a request to the Lord this morning, let's prepare our hearts. So we pray, Lord, for the ones that are facing, Lord, surgery. Lord, we pray that you would give the doctors wisdom to know what to do. And, Lord, that they would have a speedy recovery. We do pray, Lord, for those that because of the pandemic, their finances, Lord God, have been affected in a negative way. And we pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs. Yes. We pray that you would bless them. We pray that you would take care of them. We pray that, Lord God, just in time, Lord, you would provide the very need. We pray, Lord, for our children, Lord God. Lord, we as adults, we, we have a hard time putting, wrapping our minds around, Lord, this is going on in almost a year now. 
And I pray the Lord you would bless our children, help them to understand better, be with them. Lord, raise their spirits, encourage them in you today, we pray. We pray for parents, Lord God, that are struggling with making ends meet. We pray as they are trying to help their kids with schoolwork and manage their jobs and manage their household. We pray that you would give them strength and wisdom today, we pray. I pray, Lord, for the unseen burdens that people bear. Lord, nobody knows the trouble I've seen, but you do, Lord, and you know all about it. So, Lord, we, we trust you. Lord, we pray today that your hand of great mercy and hand of love would be upon your people. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, today is the first Sunday of the month, and we will be closing our service out this morning with communion. If you did not get a communion packet, let's see, Vinny, would you, anybody did not get a communion packet, if you'd raise your hand, Vinny will get you one before we, okay, looks like you could, Vinny. All right, praise the Lord. So, God bless you this morning as you give, Father. Thank you for all of your blessings. I pray, God, you would bless these gifts to you. Your honor and your service and your glory today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. of Jesus. And Jesus is getting ready to go back to heaven, and uh, we have some of his last counsel to his disciples before he makes this uh, incredible journey. And we're going to begin at verse number four, okay? And I'm reading from the New International Version this morning. We're going to get down through verse number 7. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. 
It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. And word, Lord, add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Number one this morning, stay connected to the vine. Stay connected to the vine. This morning, to illustrate this, I have brought my garden hose. Okay? Are you ready? Did you pick up your towel when you came in the service this morning? Did you, you got your towel? Are you ready? Okay, get ready. Now, did you flinch when I squeezed the trigger? It wasn't connected. It wasn't connected. Now, if I had it connected to something and I squeezed the trigger, you probably all would have ducked, okay? Because you know what happens when you squeeze the trigger? When the water's connected and turned on? Water comes out. Isn't that amazing? One time we sent our kids over to church on a Sunday morning. We were all getting ready to come over from the parsonage and we were getting ready and so the, the kids uh, had come out of the back of the house and they were uh, had come into the church yet. And I heard them, it was in the summertime, and I, I heard them outside and we had a little jungle gym out there and, and I didn't know what they were doing and all of a sudden I, I heard uh, our middle daughter crying and screaming. And so I went running out and I didn't know what happened, I don't know if she fell or what. And uh, there was our son with the garden hose. It was connected and the water was turned on. And there he was like this, and our middle daughter was in her beautiful Sunday dress, soaking wet. And I'm going, what did you do that? Why did you do that? And his answer, I mean, he was only four, so we'll give him a little slack there. If he was 35, we would take the hose and use it on him, okay? And he says, but dad, he said, I wanted to put the pretty rainbow on her dress. The sun was shining bright and he had squeezed the hose and the water had fanned out and it was making a little pretty rainbow right there in the yard. And so he thought he'd just take the pretty rainbow and put it on his sister's dress. He didn't understand he was going to get her soaking wet. Okay. So we only had to have that conversation once. Uh... I did see in a novelty store, I'm not sure which one it was, it was a, it was a spigot and uh, it wasn't connected to anything and there was a, uh, uh, like a little barrel down here, small container, and there was water just pouring out of it and it wasn't connected to anything. I'm going, hmm, it's like I used to tell the kids in children's church, there's a trick to it, I know what it is, but you don't. Come to find out there's a clear plastic tube in the middle and the water's going up the plastic tube and just going up and right back down, okay? But if this is not connected to anything, you're not going to get wet. If you're not connected to the Lord, His life is not going to be flowing into you. So you need to stay connected to the Lord. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Our usefulness, our purpose, our fruit is only going to be there when we are connected. Otherwise, well, like this hose, if this is not connected, about the only thing this is good for this morning is a paperweight. Right? Okay? 
That's about what it's all going to. It's not going to water the garden. It's not. If it was real hot and you did want me to shoot you, or I wanted you to shoot me with it, it that's not going to happen until it is, and until it's connected. So the fruit of this is only going to be when it's connected. Your fruit in your life is only going to be when you are connected. Well, I will take a step back from that. There are, and always will be, fruit. But is it good fruit, or is it bad fruit? So, with the little hose container there, the little uh, handle, it is giving us fruit. The fruit is, right now, it's bad fruit, because it's not doing its job. Okay. If, if I had taken that off, and I didn't turn the water off at the, uh, at the spigot, and I just left the water running out in the yard, you know what's going to happen to my water bill? Well, we don't have a well here, you know, and that, all that money just going... Tick, 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 tick. Okay, so that's bad fruit. And so what happens when we don't stay connected? We will have bad fruit. Now, what happens to things, Jesus said here, if you don't stay connected, you're going to wither up, dry up, and then they're going to pick you up and they're going to take you off to be burned. What happens to things that we don't need anymore? Anybody have a closet or a garage or a shed or a basement? We don't have anything in our houses that we, in, inside, you know, in our, that's cluttering up that we don't use or need, right? You don't have anything. If I were to come to your house, every single thing that I would see at your house, you would absolutely say, yes, pastor, I need that and I use it every single day. Right? Uh, okay. Um, if, if we, you know, uh, we need to do some weeding. Okay, uh, I was listening to a comedian the other day. This is this is funny, but it's not funny. Uh, she said, "My revenge is that her her kids haven't been very helpful the last little while. She's been wanting them to uh, help, you know, pick up the house, clean up." She says, "So when my kids are finally out and gone, I'm I'm going to I'm going to become a hoarder, and when I die, <laughs> my children are going to have to deal with all of that stuff." You know, so that when they come into my bedroom and look on the floor, there will be banana peels and okay. Now, that that's humorous, but you know, if, if if we don't need things and we haven't used it for a while, uh, maybe take a picture of it and let it go. Okay. See, when we abide in Christ and Christ's words abide in us, then. The vine and the branch and us are doing the job that it was intended. So, when we stay in Christ, what's going to happen? When we stay connected to Christ, His words are going to be in me. Now, if you come to my house, what do you expect to find when you come to my house? Me. Right? You expect to find me. And that's what is going on in this verse. What do you expect to find in this house when I stay connected to the Lord? Love? Joy? Peace? You expect and you should expect to find those things in me. Because like we said last week, out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, if my heart is filled with the word of the Lord, then those things are going to come out of me. And I need these things in my life, and so do you. Our next verse that we're going to look at is 1 John chapter 2, and it's verse number 28. It says, abide in him, 1 John 2, 28. That's towards the end of the Bible, okay? On page 900, no, sorry. Abide in him so that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Abide, to stay in him. 
What do we teach a dog when you when you get a dog? You're, you teach the don't we teach the dog to sit, right? Sit, stay. Okay, we don't want the dog to go running off. Sit, stay. Don't go wandering. If you go wandering, you're going to get lost. You'll get left behind. Now, this passage of Scripture is one of those if-then passages of Scripture. In other words, the, there's an if. If we do something, then there's going to be a reward. If we abide in Him, when He comes... We can have confidence that we will go with him. Now, what's the what's the opposite of abiding? Uh, wandering. Uh, you abide, uh, how about goofing off? I heard one time that, uh, one of the men in the church here years ago. He was a foreman, and when he was uh, paying his, getting ready to pay his workers. Uh, some of them weren't real motivated in their working. They, they weren't really into what they were doing. They were there, you know. And so he said to one of them, he says, I think when you come up to get your pay on Friday, he said, I think you have to back up and put your hand out like this. He said, because you haven't really earned it very much. He says, don't you feel ashamed taking money when you haven't worked really hard? You know, there's something to that. Jesus, uh, John is saying here that if we have walked with the Lord and stayed connected to the vine and walked in his footsteps, then when, when he comes, we don't have to be ashamed. The other day, Beth asked me to watch this funny dog video on YouTube. And so I was watching it, and this dog, I don't know what the dog did exactly. I think, think he might have torn up one of his, uh, one of those, his what, the, the wife's pillows, okay? I think that's what might have happened. But the, the guy was saying, uh, like, uh, I'll just, Maya, come here, Maya. And Maya jumped up on the couch. Come here, Maya. And Maya went over into the corner of the couch, and Maya, the dog, put her head in the corner, and then just peeked out because the, the dog knew that it had done something wrong. Okay? So if we are walking with the Lord, holding onto Him, connected with Him, we don't have to have or be ashamed when He comes. We'll have confidence that we have been doing the right thing. And notice in this passage of Scripture, he says to them, he addresses them first as little children. You know, sometimes when some people preach, they try to make people feel guilty. You ever had a sermon? You ever listen to a sermon like that? I, if you have ever felt guilty when I've been preaching a sermon, then you were absolutely guilty. It was not because I try to make you feel guilty. That, that, that is not the job. That is not what I do. I preach the word. And as Brother Johnson used to say years ago, if you take a handful of gravel and you throw it into a barnyard, the only chickens that are in a squawk are the ones that get hit. Okay? So if you get hit, it wasn't because I was aiming at you. It was because the word of the Lord is going forth. And so I, I don't apologize for that. You can just get, you can settle that with, with the Lord. But he says, little children. And so there's something I want us to get here this morning. When we mess up, it is the devil that is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the one that wants to make you feel ter terrible. Jesus says to you, little children. Little, little children. You know? You know, it's like my it's like my son that tried to put the rainbow onto his sister's dress. I mean, I don't want him to do it every day, and I don't want him to do it anymore. But how can you get real upset with that, right? How can you get mad at that? 
You, you, you know, you can't give him a spanking for that. You can't put him in time out for that. It, you just deal with it. You know, my little child, little, little children. And see, that's how the Lord comes to us when, when we mess up. That's what he says to us. He says, little children, I know you messed up. Come here. Okay? He's not looking to pound and fire and brimstone and lightning bolt. Thirdly, in Proverbs 8, 17, the psalmist, or the Solomon wrote, I love them that love me. Proverbs 8, 17, I love them that love me. Notice it does not say, I love only them that love me. Here is love that Christ died for us when what? While we were yet sinners he died for us so let us sink in for a moment this morning that god loves you even when you mess up even when before we were in christ when while we were yet sinners he still loved us and he loves us he will always love us i love them that love me and those that see me this is the half the second part of the verse and those that see me early shall find me. Those that see me early shall find me. Now, there are three, three renditions of early that I want to look at. First, they that see me early, let's think about early as in early in the morning. Start the day with the Lord. When you wake up, start off talking to the Lord. Start off, read something in the Bible. Start your day the right way. Start it early. Early in the morning. And secondly, early at the market. When you go to the market, early in the day, what are you going to get? The best. You're going to get the best. If you go at the end of the day, what are you going to get? Well, they may not have any more turkeys at 39 cents a pound, right? Okay. If you look in the paper and Penny says they're, they're going to have a sale, well, if you show up at five minutes to nine before they close, guess what? You're probably not going to get the deal of the day. You're going to get the leftovers. Not much selection left. You're going to have to settle or what was there, because you didn't go early to the market. And early in our lives. How blessed it is when a person, a young person, finds the Lord. They spare themselves a lot of heartache. Hard to get rid of a lot of those wild oats that we have sowed. Scripture says we sow to, he that sows to the wind reaps what? To a tornado, to a whirlwind. So, the older we get, the harder it is to turn away from stuff and turn to the Lord. So he says, those that seek me early shall find me. Where do we find things? I've noticed since our kids are all up and grown and gone, uh, most of the time I find things right where I left them. Except for my socks and then... If I've left my socks in front of the couch, then my wife sometimes will pick them up. They're in the laundry, okay? Unless my granddaughter is visiting, and so then uh, when I put something down, she may take and carry it off. And, and then who knows where it is then? Where do I find things? They that seek me shall find me. Am I going to find God in an ungodly place? Am I going to find God in a sinful place? Well, I might. I might be like the prodigal son who came to his senses and was willing to eat pig slop. You know, it, you know, the older I get, the more sensitive my nose becomes to smell. 
And the more that, you know, at, at school, we have to watch out when, if one of the kids is sick. Uh, when, I was in, when I was in the sixth grade, I remember, flu went through the school. And uh, we used to keep these great big, uh, like one gallon empty cans on the shelf at, in the, at the school. And uh, it was like when one kid got sick, they would be sick. And then another kid would look at that and then go, and then we'd have like two or three kids right in a row, all sick. And so I can remember our sixth grade teacher that happened one time, she went, don't look! <laughs> because the more the kids were looking, and, and you know, and, and so watch it, and, and smells, I know they, it seems like they, um, my, it just bothers me more, you know. Boy, that guy, he must have been really hungry to want to eat pig stuff. What do we find in God's house? You're going to find his word. You're going to find his presence. You will find him when you seek him. Seek me with all your heart. Then you will find me. And lastly, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Are you weak? Are you weary? Are you faint? Some people, they faint when they see blood. We had someone that, at camp that they were, uh, they were one of the um, counselors. And a, and a kid uh, cut themselves. It wasn't real bad, but there was blood. And this girl counselor, you know, that this girl, she fell down, cut herself, and she held it up to the girl counselor. And the girl counselor looked at it and went, ah. she, she almost passed out. And then we had to take both of them, I think, to the bathroom was the nurse, okay? Uh, have you ever, ever felt faint? It's a terrible feeling to feel faint. Is, have you ever, anybody ever fainted? You ever faint? I, I've only fainted one time in my life, and I'm, I'm so embarrassed about it. Uh, I had gone to the hospital to visit a, a, a young man in the hospital, and uh, I, I have done in my lifetime, I have probably done 10,000 or more hospital visits, because I worked in the hospital as a chaplain uh, for a long, long time, and so I have done so many visits, and I've done all kinds of stuff, and seen all kinds of things, and, but one time I was, I was visiting in the hospital, and uh, it was uh, right, um, right before lunch, and uh, that day, uh, one of the men in the church, he called me and wanted to know if I could help him unload a tractor trailer of uh, potatoes, and 50-pound uh, bags of potatoes. And so I said, oh, sure, you know, I'll, I'll help you. And so back in my younger days, I could take a 50-pound bag on each shoulder. And so go up to the truck, and they would put one on each shoulder, and I'd walk them into the, uh, the garage, and we would put them down, and so there's a chain of us that were doing this, and sure enough. And, and oh yeah, by the way, I was, uh, I, was, I was dieting at the time. And so I was really crash dieting, so I just had a little tiny bit for breakfast. I went out and, and unloaded this 53-foot trailer of potatoes, you know, got them over there, went back home, showered, went to work, went to the hospital, got up to the hospital and uh, walked onto the floor and the smell of ether was so strong on that floor. It hit me like a hammer right between the eyes. It just, whoa. And, and so I'm walking down. I... I have the room number, and I have my Bible, and I'm all dressed up in my suit, and I'm walking down in the hall, and I get to the room, and I step into the room, and I, I knew that the, man, the young man uh, had been, he had been in a motorcycle accident, hit a telephone pole, not wearing a helmet, and so he was uh, in real bad shape, but he was doing better. And so when I, when I went into the room, it must have been like a thousand degrees in this room. And when I went into the room, again, the smell of ether was so strong. I was out going, my goodness, you know. So I'm standing beside him, and he had tubes and stuff like this here, you know, whatever. And I was talking to him, and, uh, 
And when I started to talk to him, he started to gurgle, and his eyes rolled back in his head, and the suction machine came on, you know, and the ether. And so I'm looking at him, and as I'm looking down, all of a sudden, I start seeing stars, literally seeing stars, like, oh, starry night, you know, like this here. And I can feel like I'm a glass that's draining water out of it, you know. And I can... I can feel myself like this. So I shut my eyes and I breathe in and out. And even when I shut my eyes, the stars didn't go away. I knew I was in trouble. So I said, let me pray for you. I prayed, you know, one of those 10 second prayers, amen. And I held on to my Bible and I started through the door. I got to the end of the bed. He was the first bed next to the door. I got to the end of the bed and that's the last I remember. I hit the floor, and when I came to, I was out in the hall, spread eagle, with a couple of nurses holding me down, because I was, <laughs> I couldn't breathe, but I, and I, but I couldn't see, my eyes were open, everything was still black, the stars were gone, but I still couldn't see, and I, oh my goodness, I lost my sight, and they said, it, 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 you're okay, you're okay, you just fainted. So it's no fun to faint. I hit my head, so they sent me down to the ER. And uh, the other pastor that was with me, he found me in the ER sitting in a wheelchair. I was so embarrassed. He said, uh, I was on, up on another floor, he said, and I heard, uh, I heard on the, uh, the pager they were looking for me because uh, your pastor friend is in the ER. He fainted for the whole hospital. <laughs> and so... I said, let's get out of here. So I just get up out of the wheelchair. I went home. I said, my wife's a nurse. She'll take care of me. They that renew their, their way upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. As, as, if you're walking in through the world, there may be things that will come along and uh, they will... They will cause you to faint. You might be seeing stars. But wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. You won't faint in the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait. We sing a song every once in a while. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Wait in the presence of the Lord. Wait. I've used this illustration before, but when our kids were younger and they'd want more to drink, I would go to start to put some more milk in their cup as they're holding it up. And they would get a little bit in the cup and then I'd still be pouring. They'd pull it back and start to drink. I learned. I would hold the cup and pour it. When I got enough in there, I would let them have it. But you know, sometimes we're just like that. We, we wait upon the Lord for 10 seconds. He starts to renew us. What do we do? Oh, we're off and gone. Wait. 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 On the Lord. Abide in Christ. If we stray, get back. As we approach communion this morning, let's examine our hearts. There's anything between you and the Lord this morning. Now is the time to make it right between the Lord. Father, we bow in your presence this morning. We pray, O oh God, help us to abide in you. Help us to stay connected to the vine. Lord, you are the source. Help us stay connected to the source. We pray, Lord, this morning as we take the bread, and we are thankful for the bread, and we're thankful for the juice. We're we're thankful for these emblems that represent your body that was broken and given for us. Lord, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So we thank you, Lord, that love covers that multitude of sin. So we pray, Lord, you would make this time real special to us today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to open your... The top one, create a piece of bread, the wafer.
Jesus gave him bread to disciples. He said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Let us break the bread together. And he took the cup, gave it to them, and says, drink eat all of it. Let us take the cup together. Jesus told the disciples, this do, as we have on our communion table, this do in remembrance of me. It's not that these emblems save us or take away our sin, but they remind us of the work that Jesus did on the cross. He paid the price for his, our sin. But not only did he pay the price by suffering, he also, up from the grave, he arose. Father, we are thankful as we commemorate your death, dying, and your pain and suffering. You're paying for our sin. We commemorate that today. But also we commemorate that you rose from the dead. Victor over hell, death, and the grave. We thank you today, Lord, for all of your many blessings. And help us, O oh Lord, to remain in you today, I pray. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Have a great week.